The Season of the Witch has brought in some changes to a couple of exotics, and the artifact this time around is really juiced for the solar subclass. So if you're a hunter and you want to be doing big damage numbers like this, here's my updated Celestial Nighthawk build. Let's not waste any time and dive right into it. So this is what the exotic looks like right here. It actually has a couple of ornaments. We have this one, looks really creepy. This one was my favorite, but then we got this one during Season of the Haunted, which I really like, especially with the eyes. But the main thing is the perk, right? So Hawkeye Hack, Precision Final Blows reduce the cooldown of your super, modifies Golden Gun to fire a single high damage shot, targets defeated by that shot, give you super energy, and explode. The recent update to the exotic brought in the precision kills give you super energy. And again, that ranges between plus 1.5% to plus 4.5% depending on the target type killed and increase the golden gun impact damage by 25%. And obviously, we want to take advantage of the perks on the artifact, mainly Heart of the Flame. So casting your solar super grants nearby allies radiant and increases the damage of your super for each nearby ally. This is the main perk for this build. Essentially, if you are doing a dungeon or a raid, it's going to allow your solar super in this case to have a lot more damage. Now, I do have some other ones that I like here. I like Kindling Trigger, so when I'm Radiant, any solar weapon that I use is going to apply Scorch to an Unscorched Combatant. With Torch while I'm Radiant, all my weapons will deal increased damage to combatants that are affected by strand and stasis debuffs. I also like revitalizing blast. This one is very important. So causing damage with a solar ability weakens champions and bosses for a short duration. So you can add a debuff onto a boss before you decide to use that golden gun. And then raise precision while radiant solar precision final blows cause combatants to ignite. Again, really good for add control. I personally like using Blast Radius and Argent Ordnance if I'm using a rocket. So essentially, if I get rapid final blows with a rocket or grenade launcher, it gives me an armor charge. And firing a rocket will consume one of the armor charges and it gains increased damage and reload speed. Now, these last two down here, from whence you came, increased ability damage to taking a scoring combatants. Highly recommend this for the new Warlord's Ruin dungeon. And then lastly, wished into being, basically it's a faster way to get the super. So while your super is nearly fully charged, ability final blows will spawn orbs of power. Now let's go over what I'm using under the Gunslinger subclass. No, I will be talking about a couple different substitutions you can make in here depending on how you want to play. But for the super, you're definitely going to want the Golden Gun Marksman, mainly because it's the only Golden Gun that allows you to deal precision damage, which we definitely want to take advantage of with our one shot from Celestial Nighthawk. It over penetrates targets and creates orbs of power on precision hits, and it benefits from being radiant. For my abilities, I personally like Gambler's Dodge for my class ability so I can dodge near target to get my melee back, but I know a lot of people also like Acrobat's Dodge so when you dodge and land, it makes you and nearby allies radiant so it's good for the team in general, but I am going to be using Ember of Torches here so my powered melee attacks against combatants make you and nearby allies radiant is a minus 10 to discipline, but with my knife trick, again, I can hit that target, you know, a boss for example, anyone around me becomes radiant and they get weakened because of revitalizing blast, plus would knock them down you know your solar supers are enhanced so that means our marksman gun has increased duration and while we're radiant final blows with the equipped throwing knife fully refund your melee energy so you can continue throwing knife trick and getting kills with it causing radiant consistently and then keeping that uptime with ember of empyrean so any solar weapon or ability final blows extend the duration of restoration and radiant effects applied to you it doesn't extend the duration for your teammates unfortunately but as long as you continue to get the knife trick kills ember torches is going to be proc for you and your allies if you did want to run the acrobats dodge you can trade out ember of torches for something like ember of solace and also note under the artifact you could potentially use flint striker it is a little tougher because you need rapid solar weapon precision hits or final blows to grant radiant so i just like the more consistent thing of just using knife trick with Ember of Torches. For my other abilities, I personally like Triple Jump, but you can use what you like here. And then for the grenade, I like the healing grenade for tougher activities for the restoration and cure. But if you're doing something that's a little easier or you have another way to heal yourself with your teammates, you can use whatever grenade you'd like. For our other aspect we're using on your mark, Precision Final Blows grant you and nearby allies increased weapon handling and reload speed for a short duration. That stacks up to three times. Activating your class ability immediately grants max stacks of on your mark. Now for my other fragments, I like Ember of Ashes, so you apply more score stacks to targets. Next up, Ember of Searing. Defeating Scorched Targets grants melee energy and creates a Fire Sprite. It is a plus 10 recovery. And then next up, Ember of Mercy. When you revive an ally, you and other nearby allies gain restoration. And picking up a Fire Sprite grants restoration. That's a plus 10 to resilience. Again, this is pretty much this combo allows for another way for you to gain restoration. Next, let's go over the armor mods that I'm using, starting with the helmet. I personally like Harmonic Siphon, which translates to Solar Siphon. So there's rapid solar weapon final blows will create an orb of power. I also like Hands-On, so I gain super energy on melee kills. And then lastly, 
intensely radiant light. Casting your super causes nearby allies to also increase their current armor charge by one. Allies that have a different subclass element from you increase their armor charge by two. So it's pretty much guaranteed when I pop that Celestial Nighthawk super, everyone around me is going to gain armor charges so they can take advantage of their weapon surge mods. On my gauntlets here, I like impact induction and focusing strikes. So when I deal damage with my melee, I get a reduction to my grenade cooldown and my class ability cooldown. And then lastly, I like heavy handed. Your power melee final blows create orbs of power. No heavy handed firepower and the Reaper mod on the subclass all kind of got nerfed to where they have a 10 second cooldown from how fast you can create orbs of power. But since we are going to be using the melee fairly often with this build, I figured we might as well take advantage of it. On the chest piece, you can use whatever combination of reserve and resistance mods that you like. I personally like harmonic reserves, which translates to solar reserves, so I have increased ammo for my solar weapon, specifically my solar heavy weapon, and then I like arc and void resistance. On my boots here, I'm rocking double solar weapon surge, so my solar weapons gain a small bonus to damage while you have any armor charge. Your armor charge now decays over time. You gain armor charges by collecting orbs of power. With this build, maximum, you can have three armor charges. With any of these blue mods, they will last 10 seconds, so at max armor charges, we will have 30 seconds of this bonus weapon damage. Note, Golden Gun is considered a kinetic weapon for some reason, so if you did want to swap one of these out for kinetic weapon surge, you totally can, so your Golden Gun will do more damage, so just keep that in mind. Then lastly, I like recuperation, so when I pick an orb of power, I get health back. Lastly, on my class item, I like time dilation, so my decaying armor charge has a longer duration, so that 10 seconds that I mentioned previously now gets bumped up to 15 seconds per armor charge, so that's 45 seconds of this bonus weapon damage. I also like powerful attraction, so it automatically collects nearby orbs of power when you activate your class ability. And then lastly, bomber reduces grenade cooldown when using your class ability. For stats to focus on, we talk about every video, try to have tier 10 100 resilience. It's going to be a 30% damage reduction in PvE, which is highly needed. And then I would like to focus on discipline because if I need that healing grenade more often, especially in tougher activities, whether it's for myself or my teammates, I definitely want to be able to use that. Then lastly, definitely look into specking into intellect because this is tied to how fast your super cooldown is. Now for your weapon options, you can honestly use just about any solar weapon that you like. I personally like this Abyss Defiant here, you know, Enhanced Reconstruction and Incandescent with Cursed Thrall. So when I get that melee kill, every kill for I think it's like 15 seconds causes the Cursed Thrall explosion so I can spread Scorch around on top of making targets explode. So it's really good for that crowd control aspect. Plus with the solar weapons, I could take advantage of everything here on the artifact, you know, specifically Rays of Precision. So causing those free ignites for fast solar kills is going to be very nice. Again, there's variety of weapons you can use. Callus Mini Tool, you know, the Epichal Integration, Sunshot if you'd like. Again, there are plenty of good weapons like this primary. And even like if you want to use special weapons like Cartesian Coordinate, again, it can't do precision damage for all that stuff. But again, it is a good solar weapon. As you can tell, Lead from Gold, Volper Weapon, very good for DPS in general. And then for your heavy, I have Apex Predator on here. Reconstruction Bait and Switch, very, very good for boss fights. And like I said, if you're using a rocket, would highly recommend Blast Radius and at least Argent Ordnance. You may not need Blast Radius, but Argent Ordnance is gonna be pretty solid for the extra rocket damage. Also, I have this Cataclysmic here, four times the charm, bait and switch. This thing is great for precision damage. And you also have the new Rocket Dragon's Breath. You have the Lament, you know, Solar Sword. Very good for DPS if you need a close quarters style weapon. But again, there are plenty of weapon options to use. As you can tell in my primary, I'm using Conditional Finality here. I really like this, especially for the new dungeon, but you can put on Wither Horde. I have the Swordbreaker Adept here, Slide Shot 1-2 Punch with Cursed Thrall. I also have Deliverance with Chill Clip. Again, there are multiple options. There's really nothing set in stone for this in particular. Just put on solo weapons that are going to work for you. Now, if you got through all that and you're still a little confused about how this build works, I'm going to break it down for you. But honestly, all you need to do is get your super and use it on a tough target. Like Celestial Nighthawk says, before you even get the super, the way you're going to get it faster is by getting precision kills. So that's why I am using a solar auto rifle in this case. And again, with those precision hits, if I become radiant from using knife trick on a target, Ember of Torches is going to proc in, and then I gain the bonuses from Kindling Trigger with Torch as well. So my weapons will do increased damage to combatants that are affected by Strand and Stasis debuffs, Revitalizing Blast. So if there is a champion or boss, I can use my melee. It'll cause that weaken and then raise precision. If I get a precision final blow, it'll cause an ignition. And whether I decide to toss the healing grenade down on myself or I collect a fire sprite that's created from Ember of Searing, that's going to give me restoration because of Ember of Mercy. As long as I continue to get solar ability or weapon final blows, I can keep up restoration and radiant almost infinitely. And if I decide to use the knife on a combatant that's a little bit tougher, again, I could lose the knife, but if I kill weaker targets with knock them down, I can continue having the throwing knife as long as I'm radiant. So 
like I said, if you hit a target and you're like, oh, it didn't kill him, you can use Gambler's Dodge to dodge near them, hit him again, and if they die, you get it back. Plus, with Ember of Ashes, all of your Scorch across the board, whether it's from weapons or abilities, again, that will have increased stacks, so you have a higher chance to cause ignitions with that. Plus, with On Your Mark, any precision kills that you get is also going to benefit your weapon handling and reload speed for you and your allies. Everything else is kind of a bonus before you use the super. You know, with Solar Siphon, you're creating orbs of power from your weapon final blows. Same thing with Heavy Hand. You get melee final blows that'll create orb of power. Hands-on, melee final blows give you your super back faster. Impact induction, focusing strike. That's ability cooldown specifically. You know, when you pick up those orbs of power, it gives you armor charges. You get solar weapon surge, so now your solar weapons will do increased damage. Better for, you know, both your weapons, whether you're facing a boss or you know, just regular ads. Again, with time dilation, you have a very long uptime with that as well. If you don't have the healing grenade, you can always use Gambler's Dodge in your target to get it back faster because of Bomber and also pick out Orbs of Power with powerful attraction. But the main thing is the setup for using your one-shot Celestial Nighthawk shot. So right before you do damage to a boss, there are a couple things you are going to want to make sure of. First up, try to have your knife trick so you can use Revitalizing Blast on the boss so it weakens them or at least have a you know teammate that's either using tractor cannon or a way to weaken the target with a vitalizing blast or like a void grenade or something like that you definitely want to add that debuff before you pop the super next you want to make sure your teammates are near so heart of flame procs so again casting your solar super grants nearby allies radiant so Number one, if they have anything on the artifact that benefits from Radiant, fantastic, but it increases the damage of your super for each nearby ally. So you want to make sure they are in, you know, a vicinity of you so you get extra damage from your solar super. Also, they can take advantage of it as well if they're using a solar super too. But then you want to pop the super, gain Heart of Flame, make sure you're Radiant, make sure they're weakened, and then shoot the target right in the precision shot. Try not to miss. Trust me, I've done it a couple times. And then after that, go ahead and start using your weapons for DPS. Like I said, if you want to use rockets with Argent Ordnance, again, it will consume an armor charge, but that rocket will do increased damage, so just keep those things in mind. But that, ladies and gentlemen, is my Season of the Wish Celestial Nighthawk build. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. I'm actually going to put the build for this in the description. It's going to be a dim link, so if you want to copy everything that I'm using, down to the subclass, the armor mods, even the drip, if you'd like. Some people are asking me about shaders and whatnot, so if you want to copy all this and test off for yourself, definitely let me know. Like I said, there are a couple combinations with this build in particular that's really good for team play. And with this season, with the Celestial Nahog buff and the stuff on the artifacts, it's just very hard to put this down in regards to taking out bosses. In any event, if what you saw was valuable or entertaining to you, be sure to drop a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, and then turn on that bell next to notifications so you don't miss out on another build video here on the channel. If you didn't know, we live stream here on YouTube and on Twitch. Again, that link will be in the description. We will be playing a lot of Destiny 2. We cleared the Warlord's Ruin dungeon in around an hour and a half, and then the second one we cleared it in 49 minutes. So we will be doing a lot of those dungeon carries. So if we're doing them live and you want to hop in, definitely hop in the chat. And if you want to be proactive, join my Discord. Again, we're trying to grow the Discord. We're trying to get more people that want to play Destiny 2 and do LFGs, you know, dungeon carries, all that great jazz. But we are talking about other games in there, including Cyberpunk, you know, PC Tech, anime, and more. Lastly, if you want to support the channel even more, you can look into becoming a member. If you don't know what a membership is, it is essentially like a Twitch subscription. Again, you're going to get access to the exclusive emotes, the monthly badges, and other cool stuff here on the channel, cheaper than what is a Twitch subscription, technically speaking. So if you would like more information, all you need to do is press the join button next subscribe, and that'll give you a rundown with all the details you need. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's Benny Boy. We'll catch you in the next one. Next. Oh, brother's actually running. <laughs>